Welcome to the Rustic Garden Homestead. In today's episode of Garden Ramblings, we're going to tour the garden. It was 26 degrees last night. It's 33 degrees now. It's going to get up to 55. I have a lot of cool weather crops in. People are concerned, you know, should I put stuff out? The frost is coming. Well, everything you're going to see today is resilient. It can take that harder frost, that freeze of 26 degrees. If you can get around it a little bit before you plant, that's cool, but they can get outside. You don't have to over worry about it. Let's start here over by my shed. Day lilies coming up. I put compost down. That's my hibiscus. Using bag product, this is my double shredded hardwood, not dyed, no colors added. Just putting a thin layer down to kind of just darken everything. That's my plan for this year is just kind of freshen up the shredded hardwood. I like shredded hardwood. It means it's like what's down there now was from a wood chip drop that I got. So it's kind of thicker, bigger pieces of wood. They're gonna take a long time to decay. The uh, shredded hardwood usually shredded twice. So it's thinner, breaks down more quickly. I like using that because it actually feeds my garden, not directly on the plants, but around the space, water washes things in, roots come out. So shredded hardwood is a great way to kind of provide nutrients for your garden over the long term. This is a black carrot, some more day lilies, uh, different flowers coming up in there. And this is really where I've ended, where I started. Where I started the video is where I've ended so far in my work. I'm going to pick it up here, slow and steady get the mulch down, and then I'm gonna keep working out that way to the back end of the garden, which we'll see shortly. Daffodils are absolutely beautiful. I love them, picking bouquets. Freshen up the soil in here, added a rhubarb plant this year. The one on the right was from something I got at Home Depot. It was only 12 bucks, which is a pretty good price. They can be hard to get started. The one on the left, coming back from last year. So I'll have my two rhubarbs in here, apple tree, grapes. Those are uh, lilies, not the edible type. Here is my nectarine tree, which I've pruned pretty harshly. I just had to buy a tool to reach up there and cut off all those branches. They're not clean cuts, but I couldn't really get up there. And I am not going to stand on the top of a ladder. Not worth the risk. But I've had to cut this down to manage the size. This year I plan on spraying regularly with antifungals, but there's no point, you know, letting your tree grow so tall that you can't get to it the fungus could start up there, get hold. So I'm managing the size of the tree. It's going to be plenty, plenty of nectarines. I had so many last year that the branch right there actually got overweighted and snapped off. So, and this tree is growing like crazy. And this, believe it or not, this might be only be in its third year, maybe fourth year. And when I bought it, it wasn't even six feet tall. It was just a thin tree. It's just going crazy right there. Garlic looks good. My onions are coming up right next to them. Carrots are up. Those are all from last year. Garlic, more garlic. All these beds have been fixed up. These are the onion sets that I put in that you see the onions coming up now. They're doing pretty well. Took that freeze like a champ. No worries, no concerns. You can see the bags I'm working with with different product. That's my peach tree. I've been cutting that back too for the same reasons that I explained. There'll be a lot of peaches on there. This tree's a good size and I think it's actually on its third year there. That's what I thought the nectarine should look like, but it's massive. Anyway, there's gonna be a lot of peaches on there. I'm gonna have to remove some because on your younger trees, you don't want all the fruit to be sucking the energy out of them. You have to get a good balance between fruit production and letting the plant keep enough energy for its roots and continue growing. When it gets larger, you don't have to worry about it that much. But the more fruit you have, more issues you might have with disease, etc. This will probably be taken care of over the next week. This is my no-dig garden. I want to get some potatoes in there. Potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Onions are in there. Coming inside. Containers are all set up. The garlic, the collards, some spinach, some spring garlic that I pressed in. I was talking about that in one of my videos. That's starting to come up now. So very quickly, that's going to break the surface and it's going to start growing for you. The peas are all up. No worries. Again, 26 degrees, several degrees below freezing, and all the peas are popping up. And they're going to be fine. The green growth of peas can take that frost. The flowers and the pods can't, but by the time they're forming, it's going to be warm. So no worries. That's why you can get your peas in really early. Here are the peas that were pre-sprouted. 
The ones that we just looked at were put in on March 4th. These were put on March 6th. Pre-sprouted for two days inside, 36 hours actually, and they look great. So I have peas going all around there. Really focused on this year planting what I like. So peas really won out. I mean, I have so many of them, well over, well over 100 peas planted, maybe even 200. Some broccoli overwintered. Some cool things about this is if it makes it, the head itself might be beat up and browned out, and it was on here. So I just cut it back, you can see, and I'm getting all these nice side shoots of little broccoli, and I'm just picking them for salads. We had five days of warm temperatures, and the um, crown started to spread out and get ready and getting ready to flower. Now that it's colder, the crowns will stay tighter. That's one of the goals with broccoli and cauliflower, is you need enough cool weather so that the broccoli head doesn't flower. You want it to stay nice and tight and green. Same with, same with cauliflower. Even though it's this nice, you know, white head that we buy, that will actually uh, le not leaf out, but it will um, loosen up and it's going to flower. Cool weather keeps cauliflower and broccoli nice and tight so that we can get the kind of head that we want to harvest. That is horseradish. That can take a frost. Some other spring garlic that I planted earlier before the video. That's all coming up. I mean, looking pretty good. So you still have time. That's a dianthus, a red dianthus. Been feeding this and watering it. Looking good. One of the things I want to stress is we had those five days of 60 plus temperature, lots of wind. It's really easy to forget to water your garden in the cool season, early spring, whatever. I'm still watering these plants every second day because they dry out real quickly. And when you put in transplants, like the guys right down here, they have those little root balls that were growing them inside. They can't really access the water. So really water your transplants almost every other day for a good 10 to 14 days until they get roots established. Once they're established, every two days, every three days, it's probably fine. If you're putting seeds in the ground, you still want to water every two days because it still dries out. When the sun comes out and it's 50, 60 degrees, it's drying up that first inch, two inches of the soil. If it's windy, it's drying it even quicker. So the water around the roots and the seeds could dry out pretty quickly. And that's a mistake a lot of people make is that we don't water enough, well, period, over the whole season, but especially uh, early spring when it's cooler. The leaves, the bib lettuce looks pretty good. The endive in here looks pretty good. But with the wind, a lot of the outer leaves are kind of beat up. Don't worry about it. Just keep watering your plants. Give them a great drink of water soluble when you put in your transplants. These have been in for two weeks now, three weeks. I could give them a little bit more just to splash. As everything warms up and things become more regulated, meaning 40, 50 degree nights, 50 to 60 degree days, not these big bursts of 74 and then 26, everything is just going to take off and start growing really well. These are all the crops I showed you last time that overwintered. They're all coming back. They've all been watered at least once with the water soluble. Turnips, bunching onions, protected spinach in the back, more spinach, lettuce, carrots, and then that's a red romaine. And as we're walking through, this is the part of the garden that, you know, I've taken care of early on. One, two, three, four kinds of beets in here. So I love beets, they're gonna be going in. Added in some more turnips. This is sort of my root crop area. Some of the lettuces over there survived through the winter. I'm just letting them go. And here's a good example too. I mean, this lettuce is probably frozen because it's still in the shade. I mean, it's frozen solid. You can maybe see some frost. But if I bend this over, it's gonna damage it. That's gonna warm up it's going to defrost may look like it's beat up the leaves may be drooping here's some uh, spinach i think in there or some radishes but by the evening it should be fine it's really really resilient so you have plenty of time well you have plenty of time to put out your cool season crops in many areas but you can also take out some of your transplants or you can do some direct seeding, even if you're worried about the frost rolling in because these plants are really tolerant. And 26 degrees, that's pretty cold. And I know that these are all gonna survive. 
Let's go down to the one bed down here. I just filled that one up with some more compost and some other soil I had laying around. This is another root crop area. I put in watermelon radishes, um, Nantes carrots, rainbow blend carrots, and then some red baron beets in the back. So I have sectioned my garden off, sticking to the plan. Here's the beet section, or the root garden section really. Waiting for the asparagus to come up. Got my sunken containers ready for my peppers. Gonna put in some Brussels sprouts on the end too. Now, broccoli, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm gonna put in six uh, purple broccoli plants in there also, and then maybe six more. I'm trying to keep the cool weather crops out over that way. However, this is where I put up my shade cloth, keep shade on the soil when the temperatures start going up with the whole goal of trying to get a nice crown of broccoli that doesn't loosen up and begin to flower. If I leave it like this and then the May temperatures come and the sun's pounding on there, the soil warms up 60 degrees easy, 70 degrees easy. Starting getting into the 70s, 80s, that top two inches, the plant gets a signal, time to make flowers, time to produce seed. I don't want that to happen. So the shade cloth will protect the ground, keep things cooler, and last year I was able to get some nice size broccoli crowns. This bed's gonna be planted up with <laughs> something. These carrots survive, so I'm gonna keep them in there. And I'm gonna plant this way in there. I'm just gonna leave the carrots. Um, I don't want to pull them out. More spinach, endive, arugula. These beds are all going to sit and wait. Now we're coming from, so let's see if I can do this. Shredded hardwoods down here, nice and brown, a little bit of a, you know, cosmetic makeover. And then you come out here, I haven't mulched this yet. This is really where all the warm crops are good to go. So they're, you know, not really bleached, but they're much lighter from being here for a year, even two years. Radishes looking good, they're frozen too. Strawberries, everything looks, you know, pretty good. Just went through, did a video on uh, pruning blackberries, raspberries, more importantly, fertilizing them. These are blackberry canes, their second year wood, meaning they flowered and produced last year, they were dead. These make great um, trellises for your peas. So save some, if you have blackberries, save them. These are thornless. You don't want to do raspberries because they have thorns. But the blackberries are thornless, nice and solid. This will be perfect if you're growing a group of peas. Instead of buying bamboo stakes or anything like that, you can just use you can use tree branches, but you can use your, your blackberry brambles. All this space in here is going to be planted up with warm crops in some capacity. Step out of the sunshine. Shooting these early in the morning, I know the sun gets in here and creates some glares, but what can you do? So the blackberries have all been pruned out. They do get about 12 feet tall at times, so they're weaved through the cattle panel. Let me spin around this way. We'll get over here. The blueberries are all blooming. We'll just take a look. You know, I did videos on kind of waking up your strawberries, I don't know, a month ago or something, setting them up. I'm doing a whole series on vertical gardening. If you're interested in these green stock towers, they're actually on sale um, until I think March 26. I'll put that information in the video description. And it's a really good discount. It's actually a basket weave, so the outside has more of a weave on there. It's kind of cool. Set up my cool weather crops in the vertical towers. Um, did that video a couple days ago. And, you know, these are all getting beat up from that frost, but they're already, now the sun's on them, they look fine. And like, you wouldn't know that they were sitting in 26 degree temperature when this, this is not even frozen anymore. I bet you it's frozen on this side a little bit. When this warms up, um, probably tomorrow, I'll give them a nice drink of water, maybe give them a little more water soluble fertilizer, even, you know, I just did this a couple days ago, just a little splash. The liquid form of nitrogen, water soluble, means it's immediately available to the plants and they really like that now to kind of get up and growing and that's how you get a really green garden you know you you just use a lot of nitrogen to be honest with you strawberries look great you know i have them growing we'll go over to my greenhouse in my nursery area we'll show you what's going on over there towers are looking good that's my goal that i want four of these towers all set up i have you know strawberries everywhere you'll see them just wanted to show you 
the blueberry bushes are all starting to flower. They can handle the frost. Sadly, my magnolia cannot. I know I got to see it for like five days, not quite seven days, but the frost has killed off all those flowers. Nectarine, plum tree. This one was cut down. I don't know if you can see it. It's blending into the magnolia, but I cut those branches down. Got to cut some of the plums down. The stone fruit, anything with a stone, like a peach pit, they are all blooming now. Your poems, P-O-M-E, if I got it right, like your apples and pears, they're all going to be blooming later. So we have some blueberries blooming. Some of the other ones are forming buds. I have a mix. I talked about that in the uh, blueberry, raspberry, and blackberry video I just did. But you want to mix up a couple different varieties. Early blooming, mid-season, late season, different varieties. And that gives you a nice harvest of blueberries over the whole, you know, spring and when they're doing their thing. If you just do all the same variety, sometimes the blueberries aren't as plump. You want that cross-pollination. It does make a difference. Ginger's going to go in there. That's growing pretty well. But everything is starting to come together. Pruned up. Pruned my muscadines. I am not the guy to be doing pruning videos. Um, muscadines grow. They're like grapes on new growth. I believe I have that right. So I've cut these back in a kind of a chaotic way, but I want a lot of new growth. Um, I will trim them as things are going along, but I don't want to, you know, over prune them. Um, so I'm kind of just doing my own thing. And I kind of like the way it looks, to be honest with you. And I can manage them. Radishes look great. Five kinds of radishes in there. We'll see what happens. One day, you know, I'll get pruning down to a perfection. And a lot of it I learn, you know, just from experimenting. One thing that happens if you don't cut these soon enough, see if that's frozen. It's really cold. That one's frozen. That's ice. When you cut the muscadines, they will seep and they will leak. It doesn't hurt them. You want to try and do it while they're still dormant, you know, because we got that week of warm weather, everything's awake, but they're going to be fine. Let's take a look in the greenhouse, finish up here. More daffodils. The greenhouse, you know, is unheated. And just look at all the beautiful stuff that I have in here. I didn't even worry about these. These are seed starts that I did inside. Perfectly fine. I had some peppers out, out here. Of course, they needed to come in. These were all indoor seed starts, herbs, flowers, all kinds of stuff in there. I can see some globe artichokes. This is bib lettuce that's starting to come up. Kale way in the back. More lettuce in there. More kale up there. So plenty of flats. Look how beautiful this is. That's lettuce that I started indoors. Let grow for about seven days and then I just brought it out here and it got a really nice jump on the season. So the space in here is doing what I want it to do. It's holding my plants. I can typically walk in. A lot of these will come outside. I just put them all in here because they're little. Even though I know that some of these cells froze solid over January and February and the plants survived. I want the warmth. I don't want the cold to come in and slow them down. What the cold does is it can put them back into dormancy depending on how long it's around for. And they just don't grow or they get a little purpley or they just don't look great. I'm trying, you know, to get these up to size so that I can get harvest sooner. These are goji berries. They're all, not all of them, some of them died, but they're all beginning to leaf out. The raspberries will be doing that soon. In the process, nothing's in there, but I'm going to be doing marigolds soon. A little wind came through here. I mean, it was crazy, so it doesn't look so bad here. They look good, you know. So, combination of this nursery space, the greenhouse, you know, planting indoors, sticking to my plan. I really feel like my garden is where I want it to be. Let's finish out just by walking through the compost area, because I want to stress, and I'll do it probably every ramblings, I now recommend before you even start a garden, if you have the space, start a composting area. That's what's going to save you a lot of money. The more you compost, just leaves and grass, untreated grass, you're going to just be able to save so much money and you're going to have a healthier garden. Even the organic granular 
it's organic, but it doesn't add, um, what do I want to say, organic matter to the garden. You want a lot of organic matter. The organic granular fertilizer is just basically dried chicken manure. Feeds the plants, feeds the microbes, then it goes away. It doesn't really build up good soil. It's compost that builds the great soil. Pruned out here, these are some muscadines in here too. I'm able to walk through here, got my lights. One compost pile. I just keep throwing stuff in there. I haven't even used this one. This is probably four years old. Keep filling it up as you go down. There's going to be great um, leaf mold down there filled with worm castings. Planted a lot of hardneck garlic in here. It's doing really well. I think I'm going to be doing melons in this space this year. We'll see how it goes. And you can see I got the muscadines laying around. I don't know where I'm going to put those, but probably just throw them in the woods composting. If you're able to do it, you just need a bin like I just showed you. This is all stuff that I'm using now. A lot of this will just go into the planting hole. I don't need it all over the bed, so when I dig a hole for any transplant, it's going to get a big scoop of compost. It's a great way to use the compost. All right, well, thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com, and let's just take one more look. Over here to the right, I'm slowly progressing my way out. You know, I've weeded most of the areas. I'll get the mulch down. It's where all the warmer crops are good to go. Coming in this way, I've done a lot of the planting, the seeding, the mulching, and I have this side of the garden set up. And it's only like March 21st, maybe. My goal is to have everything set up and ready come April 1st. I'm a little bit ahead of schedule, which is rare, but we had that week of really nice weather. So I encourage you just to go slow and steady. It builds a great garden. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. Get a little bit done, and if you do a little every weekend, pretty soon your garden will be mostly in shape. Thanks for watching.